What happens when you spend $1,000 in Star Citizen? The concierge status is assigned to backers with purchases equal or exceeding $1,000. So yeah, no concierge status for me, I guess. I heard of this project when it was in its Kickstarter phase and I followed its development ever since, but I didn't really want to start playing it until in later development stages. Now realizing that's still far from happening, I wanted to see with my two own eyes what the fuzz is all about. I got a few ships a while ago when, when I was irresponsible with my money. But what ships do I have? And will I regret those purchases I made a few years ago? Stick around and find out, because we are going to play with all of them. In this video I'll give you a glimpse of a few of game loops present in the game that I could try. We'll do this in a clunky manner because I have no idea what I'm doing most of the time and know this, whatever I'll say by the end of this video, I want this game to be the greatest video game of all time. In Star Citizen you can be whoever you want and explore the stars on your own terms. You can mine ore, haul cargo, salvage space wrecks, hunt bounties, become a mercenary or even take up a life of crime. Fly and drive a vast variety of vehicles and play how you want to play. The possibilities are endless. If you can open the door of the room you start out into, that is. But let's just say you can open the door. What then? Well, then you need to find your way to the spaceport. That involves an elevator trip on the ground floor. Then you need to find the metro station. Basically, if you use the metro in real life, you should manage to find it eventually. You are looking for the spaceport station, by the way. But let's say you are smart and you found it. What then? Then you wait. You are not the main character in this universe, you know. While you wait, you can still smash that subscribe button with all your fury. I'm not editing this part out, by the way. I'm... I'm kidding. <laughs> Let's skip it. It finally arrives, you jump inside and pray it doesn't glitch out or anything. Uh, at your destination you might realize you took the wrong metro. Jump back in or wait for another one if you missed it and go back to the main hub. Just look at the signs. When you see the spaceport line, rejoice because you're almost there. A few more turns later you finally arrive at the right station. While you wait, you can smash that. No, never mind. We are in business already. During the commute, you can look at your character from the outside camera and regret you didn't invest 30 more seconds during the character creation. Now, following the signs, you will be in space in no time. You are looking for the customs area. When you see these blurry billboards, don't you worry. It just means your 4090 RTX video card is not good enough. Or perhaps your 64 gigabytes of RAM is somehow faulty. Who knows, they load eventually, but I digress. You are actually at the spaceport and you can call a valet to bring your ship in one of the hangars. Here, if you have a concierge status, one CIG employee warms up the engines of your ship personally. But I'm not sure. But let's be real though, that sounds highly unlikely. Use one of the fleet manager terminals to order one of your ships. And I hope your hangar looks better than mine. I took all this time explaining this trip to you so you understand the following thing. Everything in this game takes time and Star Citizen will not hold your hand too much. CIG added some quality of life features like the ability to see a map in your mobi class and even add waypoints and stuff but this is the extent it will go, I'm afraid. And at least for now. We'll give you another short example. I'm a fan of simulators and I have all sorts of gear from Trek IR to a Trustmaster, Warthog, Hotas and Joystick. Now I think you realize I play IL-2 Microsoft Flight Simulator and DCS among other things as I want to justify my purchases. This game has the most convoluted and hard to set up controls in my opinion. I, to this day, I couldn't make my track air to work and i know how to use it in every game that supports such thing it's easy to start and set up not in star citizen though anyway with that out of the way let's get in space shall we if your ship is as small as my ship compared with the size of the hangar <laughs> welcome to the poorest guys club take a second to pose in front of your ship perhaps your next tinder date will be impressed Center this instead of your pick. she will fall into your lap, I promise. Stay tuned, I'll reveal my full hangar by the end of this video. Look, I'm not making the rules, okay? I have to play this dirty YouTube game to keep people hooked, you know? 
Once you're happy with the screenshot, jump in. Enjoy the great detail of all the moving parts and the animations put into these things. Now you need to start the engine yourself, but before that you can take a tracker permit certification. If you manage to do it, it means you are qualified to track and apprehend very low risk targets, meaning you can take the easier missions. Press U to toggle the power and I to start the engines, then left alt plus N to request takeoff clearance. You can do it from the MFDs and buttons inside your cockpit too, but I have no clue. I am just following the instructions shown in the bottom right of the screen. Or you can request the clearance from the Moby Glass, comms and friends. <laughs> Look, I have no friends, lol. To take off, you press space uh, and off you go. I will stop now with this tutorial thingy as it's beyond the scope of this video. On the screen, it's me trying to fly the ship with the default joystick controls, by the way. Yeah, everything is inverted. It's a hot mess. I'm not saying it's 100% the game's fault, but yeah, it's, it's a mess. I like the water droplets in the atmosphere when you're in the clouds. Uh, that's a pretty nice touch. To be able to quantum travel to a point in space you need to be at a minimum altitude. On small moons that altitude is lower, but on big planets like this you need to be higher than this. Basically you need to clear the atmosphere of the planet first as quantum drives are disabled in the atmosphere. Once everything turns blue, you can press the left mouse button to go. And once you warp, you, you can take some more pretty screenshots or even go around your ship. Sadly, this small fighter doesn't have anything else other than the cockpit. So no playing pool in quantum travel with my imaginary friends. <laughs> After almost 4 minutes, I arrive at my first waypoint and I try to ignore the ugly moon LOD mesh that pops up when I exit the quantum travel. After just a few seconds, my quantum drive starts pulling again. And after another minute and a half, I reach another celestial body. We are getting there eventually, I promise. Now I'm a bit confused as I'm 290 kilometers off target. Surely I'm not supposed to fly all the way there with 500 meters per second, right? Right. I stop and restart my quantum drive in hopes I can use it, but nah, I I clearly miss something, man. It, this can't be. I ask in global chat, maybe someone help a noob like me. Since nobody says anything, I thought I should at least take a few more cool shots with the ship on the darkest side of the moon. And it's on this moon and its thin atmosphere. Not gonna lie, the cry engine doesn't disappoint. Now, now going back to the cockpit, I see a kind soul answered. I didn't understand exactly what he meant at that point, but I keep it in mind for the next time. I said things <laughs> in a weird way, not wanting to seem like a noob, but who am I kidding, right? I continued crawling to my mission objective and didn't even stay in quantum travel mode, which is a lot faster, by the way. So don't do what I did here. After ages, I finally get close and I see Garrett has a wingman. Damn it. Anyway, flying a small ship like this with a joystick for the first time is not a pleasant experience, not gonna lie. At some moment I switch to the other guy and my mission completes somehow, make, making me think someone else killed my target or he crashed into the moon or something, I don't know. My flying is terrible anyway, I recommend you start flying with the mouse and keyboard first. After one or two more running around chasing Greaves over here, he turns around and we just face off unloading everything we got at each other. Everything. I was confident I finished this guy as I was hitting him all this time, you know. But no. No.
that's why I crash land on this empty moon. It's cute how Brizzles here like, still explains me how to navigate the verse while I already have other problems. <laughs> I know no solutions for. And my ship is dead dead. Like dead. I only have some emergency red light on. Other than that it's off completely. So I exit the ship and look into the distance. Well, rip. There's minus 20 degrees outside. So I ask in general chat, what do I do? Uh, what do I do now? As I have no clue. Brizzles for the win, man. I'd give, I'd give this man a cookie as he was very helpful. Now respawning on the planet, I had to do all that running I showed you at the beginning to get back to my ship. I heard it's good to set up your base at the base station because then it's faster. So that's my goal at this point. I find Everus Harbor, plot a route as Brizzles taught me and off I go. It's close and it's a direct jump. Nice. Time for my first landing. Let's see how this goes. Then I go check in and I hope they have a spare room. <laughs> room 1. I feel important right now. Off I go to room 1, I find the mess on the floor. I decide to clean it like Jordan Peterson taught me. But then I change my mind. What am I doing, right? This is a video game, not real life. TLDR, I failed to change my spawn point to this location because I don't know what I'm doing. This game should need some contextual tutorials, damn it. Upset about my failure as a light fighter pilot, I decide to have a go at other types of missions. And I get out my Drake Cutter. I know this ship has some cargo space, not much, but enough for these missions. Arriving at my ship, I notice the low poly hatch. Yeah, it's because it only costs 55 uh, bucks, you know. So yeah, this is the polygon budget of a $55 ship, you know. And I wanted to say this game will not show its age by the time it comes out in the year 2044, but I guess I took a glimpse in the future. Anyway, cool interior, I liked it. I have a bed and all the good stuff. My camera has a weird rotation as I sit down on the pilot's chair. I admire the station as I take off from the hangar, looks cool and stuff, but then the lights turn on, breaking the immersion completely. I saw this happening a few times now in different situations. It's like there is some bounced light from somewhere, but I can't see the source as the planet is dark. So I take a mission, I need to get a package from point A to point B. Simple. Pretty basic stuff. And I hear people praising these missions as you can loot some crates while doing the main objective for extra money. Spoiler alert, on all courier missions I found players, so I got zero loot. Zero. Zero loot. I mean, I got some stuff, but it wasn't worth it. No idea how people recommend these missions for money, as they seem camped by players 24-7. Tell me in the comments if I should, I don't know, take certain types of missions, or I don't know, if I did something wrong. Anyway, let's do this. I enter the first structure by opening the exterior door. In this game you need to depressurize the inner chamber before you go in. It's a nice touch and the animations are pretty fast. Once inside I see a crate, but I don't figure out how to get that ore into my inventory. Next room I see another crate empty this time. And final room I see a red one and this is where the money are right here. But yeah, you guessed it, it's empty. So I go outside and straight to my main objective, not bothering with other structures, as I'm sure by this point the place is wiped clean. And I have no idea how fast those respawn anyway. I pick up my crate and off I go. I carefully place it on my ship. Because I'm a nice guy, I want to be sure nothing happens with the fragile cargo I'm holding, so I place it carefully in the other compartment of my ship. On my way I end up in the asteroid field with all kinds of debris and I almost crash into one of the damn rocks but luckily I got out of there safe. 
All I'm thinking is my fragile cargo by this point. I end up in a pretty toxic looking atmosphere. I wonder how it's like to live on such a nasty looking moon. Oh look, there's a player here too. Shocking, under 225 degrees on this moon. Nice, apparently my basic spacesuit is fine though. Anyway, once in I put my box into another box and that's it. Mission done. That's the game loop. Crap payout though. My second mission gets me stuck under the ground so I have to backspace out of it. So how do I become rich in this game man? How? I know how. It's time for some mining baby. Hell yeah! Let's do this. Let's see if this is any better because I wasn't impressed with the pew pew and courier mission so far. So now I present you my MISC prospector. I kinda like the looks of this ship, but does it look like $150? I don't know, you tell me. It sure has some cool animations. Anyway, I heard this is one of the most fleshed out gameplay loops in Star Citizen. Let's find out if it's true, you know. I hear everyone is saying go mine on selling. That's a moon of crusader. And I'm a simple man. I go mine on selling. Even if I'd like to go mine in some asteroid field to be frank for... I don't know, immersion. But before that, people say I need to set my base of operations on crew L1. If I want to mine there, because it's the closest place with a refinery. Again, not knowing anything I comply. It was a pain to find that station, but it's beyond the scope of this video. Let's just say I struggled to find it. But once I did, I went there, visited medical and changed my spawn location. Nice. Once I'm on selling, I start scanning and looking around for some rocks to mine. I find a good rock with a high percentage of baxalite. That's the most expensive ore besides quantanium, according to this graph. I hear quantanium is very volatile and explodes if you don't get it into a refinery in 15 minutes or something. So I'm not going to even try that for now. And I started chipping away on this rock. The aim is to charge the laser by increasing the intensity until it gets that optimal power. And after that fully charges, the rock pops like popcorn, of course. This is the most basic way I could describe you the mining process, as it has a lot of nuance, you know. There are a lot of mining heads, active and passive modules that contribute to the laser power and precision, so you can tailor it according to what you want to mine. Some rocks, for example, are impossible for this setup I'm running. Anyway, because I'm a monkey, I... <laughs> I go into overcharge mode, making the rock very unstable, not realizing how big is the impact of me increasing the laser power mindlessly. When this happens, it's advised to stop and then back away, in case the rock explodes, so you don't die like a noob. When it finally breaks, you hover over the individual pieces to scan them. When all parts are scanned, with right click you can uh, go into extraction mode and scoop all that juice into your cargo hold. And this is pretty much it, rinse and repeat until full. Anyway, you go back to base now and hope that your elevator doesn't bug out ejecting you in space after landing or you call it and it's missing entirely so yeah if you get past the elevator final boss and manage to store your ship and get to the refinery congratulations you made it pilot i sold my load directly to the trading console as i have little money at this point anyway but you can refine the ores and then transport them and sell them for extra alpha UAC. But yeah, I'll try that sometimes into the future when the game releases perhaps. Mining is fine and all, but what about pew pew in space with big guns, you know, big guns, big guns, the, where are the big guns? Look at this, look at this. Look at this baby. Now, compared with my first ship, the Arrow, this feels a big chunk of my hangar, isn't it? Very cool looking ship. I love the looks of it. And take a look at my big gun. Yep. 
This is what the $260 ship looks like. Let's go inside. <laughs> I promise it's not broken, guys. Wait, 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 wait. Oh my god, how do I enter the damn ship? <laughs> oh Jesus, I'm filming now, Chris. What are you doing? There you go. And now I, I promise it will close eventually. Come on. Come on. Yes. And, and here to the left is the kitchen. And after that we have the two beds. To the right, there's this avionics access sliding thingy. I suspect we'll have some gameplay elements in here sometimes in 2030. Or it's just a weapon rack and I talk out of my ass. Then there's the engineering station I know nothing about. I guess I can power the thing up from here too. This feature seems pretty useless to me. <laughs> and I think the ship has a turret, but yeah, we're not gonna bother with that. Anyway, let's see the cockpit now. Enough fooling around. Once on the pilot seat, this ship is not that different from the others I've flown so far. And it's a pity. Poor visibility to the sides, but luckily I won't be turning my head because I couldn't make track air to work, so it doesn't matter. It feels beefy and armored. Let's see this beauty in combat, shall we? So this ship is a lot slower than my arrow, but easier to control as it's not as snappy. So yeah, I I feel more precise with my aim. Oh my god, I just destroyed this guy. Mm, this is what pay to win looks like, boys. <laughs> Get used to it. This was a joke, by the way. Don't, don't click off. I am happy with my progress and I take another mission. I feel pretty invincible by this point. Nothing can hurt me. <laughs> Nothing but the dark side of a moon, apparently. So I took a few more missions, managed to do them, and I wasn't happy with the payouts. It looked like mining pays way better. At my skill level, that is, because I'm sure better missions will pay a lot better than this, you know. So this thing has decent firepower, I kinda like it. Uh, and this is with the default loadout, by the way. And now, what else? can I do in this game? So we reach this part of the video, huh? One thing that I don't want to do in this game is to engage in FPS combat. If I want uh, to play a shooter, I have plenty of shooter games I enjoy, so... I wouldn't play Tar Citizen for that, no way in hell. But I did it for this video. I think I almost got AIDS while looking for a shop and gearing up my character. Well, I didn't really get much gear, but still, I don't see the point of this entire game loop into this game. I don't want to upset people because I know many of you love it, but yeah, it's just my preference. And I hate a lot of development time goes into this crap that doesn't go into other game loops I care about, you know? And I'm sure this is the case with all of you. Everyone has preferences, you know. So I got my mission and off I go. Evict illegal occupants. Now once I'm close, I can't not notice the ugliness of this landscape and how structures and props pop in. Mm. It's pretty ugly. I see a guy up there and I think it's targeting me, but I don't think too much of it. I tried to find a place to land and I think I broke one of my wings in the process because I forgot to drop the landing gear. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Now let's see how how's this gameplay and be done with it. And look, I think he will attack my ship. Yeah, and in my infinite wisdom I forgot to take ammo or something. Oh my god. And there goes my ship. And his ship. Well, rip me, I guess. Nice game loop, Chris. This wasn't a complete waste of my time. Well, with all this said and done, 
Whew. This was a long video. Let's draw some conclusions, shall we? So I got all these ships and my hunger reflects how much I hope and want this game to succeed. And no, I'm not regretting the purchases I've made because I'm a sci-fi fan and I like the premise and the vision of the game for the most part. I delete the FPS combat today but yeah you're lucky i'm not in charge as i said i followed the development of this project since the beginning especially because i'm an environment artist myself and i like some of the stuff cig is doing but in the process of getting more funding the feature creep is of the scale guys i see a lot of stuff in the game as of today but it's a pretty buggy experience oh and i didn't even touch most of the activities and the ones I did showcase it was only at the surface level. But from what I see into the alpha right now and what I know to be the goals of Chris and his teams, in 2035 we'll still wait for features even on the game loops we have today in a basic shape or form. So listen, I'm not judging too harsh here. I did my part, I contributed to this madness and I hope Chris delivers a truly unique and fun game. I just hope like many of you to still be around when it releases and I also hope the graphics will still hold when that happens because I can already see outdated stuff here and there even if the game overall looks great. So I fully recommend this game if you are a sci-fi fan uh, with a beefy computer even in this state. The good news is even if you have a bad PC and generally don't want to pay big bucks for upgrades all the time, by the time this is a more <laughs> feature complete product, even your bad PC should be able to handle it, you know. Anyway, enough of my rambling. What are your thoughts and experiences with the game? I'm really curious. Thank you for watching, make sure to subscribe if you watch this until the end and tell me if you liked it and if you want more Star Citizen content or this will be a one, one hit wonder as there are plenty of people covering the game. Watch this next if you want to see my honest review of Starfield. Until next time, take care and see ya.